The Sirens by Giovanni Pascoli. Translated from Italian by Taije Silverman and Marina Della Putter Johnson. From there he sailed farther on, and sadder. Standing at the stern, he looked out darkly till the Cyclops' land turned slowly into view. He saw the island's unfarmed peak that rose up sharp and high as if to mark itself apart, and watched a fire's smoke unfold from where a shepherd lulled it. But those who bent to pull the oars saw shadows on the bruise of sea, the shadows of those Cyclops, as still along the shore, as if they too were hills. The old man heard his heart beat, like the yelping of a dog asleep. My dream was neither more nor any less than what it was, a dream. And wind and smoke from burning wood, but truth is the only good. He spoke thus to himself, and then remembered the two sirens, with their slope of petalled meadow in the calm of sea. Again he heard their honeyed song. Men, stop your ship. There's no one on earth who passes by without first coming near, and no one who listens without loving what he hears. Nor does he turn away without perceiving more. We know of all that happens on your worldly shores. And then again, remembering, he understood that Cirque would have envied him the only precious thing knowing. It's what she must have longed for in her den of spells and beasts. But humankind endowed with thought has always been compelled to stop, to listen in, although he'd lose his home and friends, although his bones would glisten in their withered shell of skin. The hero, who was old now, turned to all his old and all bound men. Let sail towards the only good, the singing of the sirens. I want to hear their sound without the ropes around my wrists, to raise my white-haired head as if a sail for the ship, to lift it up, release, and know the whole of what will happen from the sirens' lips. With this he roused the hearts of those who beat the water back with oars. It sparked in them that same pure thirst to know the earth, if vines on terraced rock had brought forth fruit this year. If someone's cow had given birth, how much the neighbour's crops were worth, and if his wife were weaving now, or walking toward the well.